Luke Skywalker is the Tatooine farm boy who went on to become a rebel hero in Jedi Knight. He was raised by Owen and Beru Lars, who he believed were his uncle and aunt, during his 18th year as boredom and the need to finally leave the desert planet were suffocating him. He saw signs of a space battle in the skies over Tatooine. He did not know it at the time, but this was more than a real engagement happening in Tatooine's orbit. It was a sign that his whole life was about to change, and that the destiny he was born to fulfill was ready to begin. When Luke's uncle Owen purchased a pair of droids from a group of Jawa merchants, Luke became wrapped up in the smaller droid's quest, for little R2-D2 had come to Tatooine to locate Obi-Wan Kenobi and present him with an important message. That message propelled Luke Skywalker on a journey to rescue Princess Leia and learn the skills of the Jedi Knights. Obi-Wan, whom Luke knew as Old Ben, explained that Luke's father had been a Jedi Knight who had been betrayed and murdered by Kenobi's student, Darth Vader. He gave Luke his father's lightsaber, promising to teach the young man the ways of the Force. Unfortunately, the Empire was meanwhile searching for the pair of droids. Stormtroopers tracked the droids to the Jawas, and from them to Owen and Beru Lars, killing them all in their desire to leave no witnesses behind. With the help of Han Solo and Chewbacca, the Wookiee, Luke, Obi-Wan, and the droids escaped from Tatooine, and eventually rescued Princess Leia from the Death Star. Though Obi-Wan was killed by Darth Vader during the campaign, but the Force was strong in Luke Skywalker, and he fired the shot that destroyed the Death Star to end the Battle of Yavin. Over the next three years, Luke became a prominent member of the Rebel Alliance. He achieved the rank of commander and took charge of the X-Wing squadron known as Rogue Squadron. While on Hoth, Luke was led by a vision of Obi-Wan Kenobi to the swamp planet Dagobah, where he was to find a Jedi Master named Yoda to complete his training. Luke learned much from the wizened old Yoda, but he cut his training short to help his friends at Cloud City. This was the site of Luke's first confrontation with Darth Vader. He lost three things in this meeting, and almost lost a fourth, his life. Vader sliced off Luke's right hand, sending it and his lightsaber heirloom into the bowels of Cloud City. Then Luke lost his innocence, for Vader told him that Kenobi had lied. Vader had not killed Luke's father. He was Luke's father. With the help of Princess Leia and Lando Calrissian, Luke barely escaped with his life. After being fitted with a prosthetic hand, Luke traveled to Tatooine to rescue Han Solo from Jabba the Hutt. When Jabba refused to simply hand over Solo and let them all go free, Luke was forced to destroy the Crime Lord and his entire operation. He then returned to Dagobah to finish his training and discover the truth of Vader's words, but he found a dying Yoda, who confirmed his worst fears and explained that his training was complete. All he had to do to become a full Jedi was to confront Vader a second time. He also learned from Ben Kenobi's spirit form that Leia was his sister. Another Skywalker strong in the Force, kept hidden to one day battle against the Emperor. At Endor, Luke decided to meet Vader, not in battle, but to free the good in him and return his father Anakin from the dark side. Even as the Emperor worked to corrupt Luke, Luke managed to reach the small spark of good buried deep within the darkness and armor of Vader, and Anakin Skywalker re-emerged. Anakin then killed the Emperor and sacrificed his own life to save his son. Luke returned to his friends and family as the Galactic Civil War came to an end. Five years after the Battle of Endor, Luke continued to assist the New Republic as a sort of goodwill ambassador and Jedi Knight at large. In the intervening years, he had begun training Princess Leia, but had not progressed very far. He was instrumental in putting a stop to Grand Admiral Thrawn's campaign to destroy the New Republic through the use of cloned warriors and the mad Jedi Master named Joris Kabaoth. During this period, he withstood the threats of Mara Jade and eventually convinced her to join the New Republic, or at least sign on, so that he could help her learn to use her Force abilities. 
One year later, Luke decided that the best way to defeat the Reborn Empire and resolve the galactic conflict was by learning the Emperor's darkest secrets as a protege. In the end, he was forced to battle a young clone of the Emperor, filled with the undying evil of the ancient Palpatine. The Emperor defeated him in lightsaber combat, but Leia came to her brother's aid. Luke learned that the way of the Jedi is not a solitary path. With the power of luminous beings, the brother and sister unleashed the Force upon the dark nexus that was Palpatine, together conquering his evil with a Jedi fire that outshone the dark side. Now it falls to Luke to help the Jedi Order rise again. Millennium Falcon The Millennium Falcon is an old, battered, and reconstructed stock light freighter of Corillian design, approximately 27 meters in length. Currently it serves as the personal transport and means of income of Han Solo and his partner Chewbacca the Wookiee. In the past, it also belonged to Lando Calrissian and assorted others. Under Solo's guidance and Chewbacca's careful and loving administration, the Falcon has undergone major overhauls, refittings, and modifications that make all but its external appearance vastly different from the manufacturer's specifications. Some of the modifications include custom security mechanisms, computer-assisted targeting consoles, and boosted deflector shields. It also has a more powerful hyperdrive, armored hull, and weapon system that allowed for a ship of its class, size, and designation. The Falcon is armed with two quad laser cannons, one each in top and bottom turrets, two concussion missile launchers, and a retractable light laser cannon. With the addition of falsified ID profiles and hidden cargo holds, the Falcon is a perfect smuggling vessel. During much of the Galactic Civil War, the Falcon suffered from a rash of minor problems that required almost constant periods of repair. Still, it was one of the best ships in service to the Alliance. It participated in the destruction of both Death Star battle stations, ran through Imperial blockades with apparent ease, and ferried Princess Leia Organa on many of her most important missions during those dark years. Mon Calamari The bipedal amphibious species, known as the Mon Calamari, come from the planet of the same name, this gentle race became strong supporters of the Rebellion after the Empire invaded their world. The Mon Calamari watched many of their cities crumble under the onslaught of the Empire in response to their refusal to toil as slaves to help build the Imperial war machine. The capricious destruction was intended to be a clear message as to the fate of all those who opposed the Emperor's new order. Instead, it turned the peaceful Mon Calamari into a formidable fighting force, and the soul of the Rebel Alliance. In addition to their numbers, the Mon Calamari brought with them badly needed capital starships and the leadership of Akbar. The Mon Calamari are a race of shore dwellers. With an affinity for water, they developed a symbiotic relationship with the water-dwelling Quarren, who also inhabit their world. And this joining led to the planet's golden age with the Quarren to mine ore from the ocean floor, and the Mon Calamari to design practical uses for the metal, the great floating cities of Mon Calamari were built. These cities extend above and below the water, and the technology was eventually used to create orbiting space platforms. The Mon Calamari see space as an endless ocean of stars, and they were tempted to explore those depths from the earliest periods of their civilization. First they colonized their own star system, then they discovered the secret of the hyperdrive. But before they could reach out to find the galactic community they dreamed of, they met the Empire. The Empire did not want to share anything with the Calamarians. They wanted to use the gentle folk and their technology to further their own war effort. When the Mon Calamarians refused to become slaves, the Empire destroyed a number of floating cities. It was the Empire's opinion that such a display of destruction would cow the peaceful people. Instead, they learned to fight back. After repelling the Imperial forces, the Mon Calamarians discovered the Alliance to restore the Republic. They joined with this group, 
pledging to fight for the dream of freedom until the Empire was finally destroyed. Six years after the Battle of Endor, as the New Republic was solidifying its position in the galaxy, the Empire began a new campaign to reassert its power and dominance. The water world of Calamari was the first planet attacked by the reborn Emperor's world devastators in the Battle of Calamari. The world suffered great amounts of damage, but the new Imperial war machines were eventually stopped thanks to the actions of Luke Skywalker. Mon Mothma Mon Mothma had been the senior senator of the Old Republic when Palpatine rose to power. She remained a part of the Senate for as long as she thought there was still a way to repair the system from within. When Palpatine declared himself Emperor and the Senate lost all but the most rudimentary powers, Mon Mothma went underground to help form the Alliance and restore the Republic. She organized cells of resistance across the galaxy, using her own beliefs in freedom and the rights of all beings to inspire others to action. As the Empire's tyranny became more apparent, her movement gained momentum and spread rapidly. Soon whole planets were throwing in with the Alliance, and Mon Mothma was elected as its leader. Her initial plan never wavered. By engaging the Empire in hit-and-run skirmishes, the Alliance would publicize its existence to the galaxy and show that the Empire was not all-powerful. Over time, she worked to organize the forces necessary for a final military confrontation to determine the fate of the galaxy. The confrontation took place in a tiny system in the shadow of a forest moon, the Battle of Endor. Mon Mothma's family background prepared her for her role in the Rebel Alliance. Her father was an arbiter general for the Old Republic, who was called upon to settle disputes between the various member species. Her mother was a planetary governor, who taught her daughter how to administer, to organize, and to lead. Chandrilla, her homeworld, elected her to the Republic Senate at an early age. She was the youngest senator to serve until the election of Leia Organa of Alderaan. She served with vigor and integrity, despite the fact that the Republic was already crumbling from internal corruption. She distrusted her colleague, Senator Palpatine, from the start, and was at the forefront of those opposing his new order when he was elected president of the Senate. She strived to work within the law, upholding the principles of the Republic, even as the Empire was being formed. She was the last senator to gain the title of senior senator, but she relinquished this post when it appeared that the Senate was to be disbanded. Going into hiding, she used her skills as a diplomat to bring the various rebellious groups together as the Alliance to restore the Republic. In this capacity, she was selected to lead the Alliance in its quest to restore freedom and justice to the galaxy. Since the end of the Galactic Civil War, Mon Mothma has been working to build a new government called the New Republic. She has aged noticeably in the five years since the Battle of Endor, but her mind remains sharp and her commitment total. Through her efforts, the New Republic may well become as true in form as it is in name. Moss Eisley Moss Eisley is the spaceport city on the outer rim world of Tatooine. The city attracts interstellar commerce, as well as all sorts of spacers looking for rest and relaxation after a long haul. The vast number of aliens and humans constantly moving through the spaceport and its distance from the centers of Imperial activity make Moss Eisley a haven for all types of thieves, pirates, and smugglers. Even now, without the influence of Jabba the Hutt, and his criminal organization, the city remains a hive of scum and villainy. The city's old central section is laid out like a wheel, while the newer sections are formed into straight blocks of half-buried buildings to protect them from the heat of the twin suns. Instead of having a central landing area, the entire city is a spaceport, with crater-like docking bays scattered throughout Moss Eisley. The Old Republic the Old Republic was a democratic galactic government that spanned time as well as distance. For over a thousand generations, this government spread justice and freedom from star system to star system, 
elected senators and administrators from all the member worlds participated in the governing process, and the noble Jedi Knights served as the Republic's protectors and defenders. In the years prior to the current era, corruption, greed, and internal strife began to destroy the Old Republic from within. Special interest groups and power-hungry individuals accomplished what no outside threat ever could. They weakened the galactic government and gave rise to apathy, social injustice, ineffectiveness, and chaos. To reverse this destructive trend, or at least give the impression that something was being done, both sides elected a compromise candidate to serve as president for the Senate. For all his promises and plans, the newly elected Senator Palpatine quickly named himself Emperor, abolished the Republic, and began a reign of terror and even greater social injustice based upon his dark vision of a new order. The old Republic passed away, and the Empire was born. Probe Droid Probe droids, or probots, are designed to perform reconnaissance missions, gathering data and transmitting it back to their masters. As sophisticated surveillance and tracking droids, probots have a wide variety of scientific and military applications. Tenacious hunters and searchers, probots are equipped with an array of sensors, including electromagnetic, motive, acoustic, seismic, and olfactory measuring devices. Military probots typically receive offensive and defensive weaponry, designed to withstand the rigors of space and hostile planetary environments. These droids are extremely tough and durable, and have a variety of specialized tools connected to many mechanical appendages. Most probots are launched in one-way pods which get the droids to their target location. Once there, they must complete their missions and report back to their bases of origin. If feasible, the bases may provide a means for the droid's return. Otherwise, they are on their own. If the missions call for it, probots are provided with orbital ships that allow them to perform their missions from space and then return to their bases. Most models use repulsors to provide locomotion once they reach their destination. The Empire employed a large number of these droids to search for the hidden rebel base after the Battle of Yavin. One finally tracked the rebels to the ice planet Hoth. After broadcasting its findings back to its command ship, the probot self-destructed in order to avoid capture. R2 Unit One of the most popular astromech droid models in service is the R2 unit. R2-D2, Luke Skywalker's droid, is an R2 unit. Like other astromech droids, R2 units are designed to operate in a hostile environment especially deep space. By plugging into terminals or ship interface sockets, R2 units can augment and enhance the computer capabilities of starships. These droids assist with piloting and navigation and serve as onboard repair and maintenance technicians. Though the use of infrared receptors, auditory receivers, computer link-ups, and a variety of sensor packages, these droids can interact with the world around them. A holographic recorder slash projector located in the domed head allows these units to record and play visual images which occur within their sight range. A number of retractable maintenance appendages are hidden within the cylindrical bodies. These include firefighting apparatus, information storage slash retrieval jacks, grasping claws, laser welders, and circular saws. RT units stand 1.05 meters tall. R5 unit. Like the popular R2 series, the R5 unit is an astromech droid. Owen Lars originally purchased an R5 unit, R5-D4, from the Jawa traders. Luke convinced him to take R2-D2 instead, when the R5 unit displayed signs of damage. R7 unit. The R7 unit is the newest series of astromech droids. R7 units were specifically designed to interface with the new E-Wing Starfighters. The Rebel Alliance The popular name for the Alliance to restore the Republic is the Rebel Alliance. Opposed to the tyranny of the Empire and its new order, star systems, single worlds, and even factions and individuals from otherwise neutral 
or empire-aligned planets united to bring justice and freedom back to the galaxy. The Alliance's opposition ranged from subversive activities to military actions, culminating in the massive Battle of Endor. In most cases, the term rebel was used by the Empire. The Alliance rarely applied the term to themselves. S-Foil The wing section assembly of an X-Wing starfighter is called an S-Foil. The double-layered wing spread apart for attack, forming the X that gives the craft its name. Each wing section is connected to the diagonal wing section opposite it. Sabak. Sabak is the card game Lando Calrissian and Han Solo are both fond of playing. In fact, Han won the Millennium Falcon from Lando in a Sabak game the two played many years ago. Sabak is played with an electronic deck of 76 card chips, whose values change randomly in response to electronic impulses. There are four suits in a Sabak deck. Sabers, staves, flasks, and coins. Each suit consists of 11 numbered cards, 1 to 11, and 4 ranked cards, 12 to 15. The ranked cards are the Commander, the Mistress, the Master, and the Ace. There are also 16 face cards. When a hand is dealt, the dealer presses a button on the Sabak table to send out a series of random pulses that shift the values and pictures shown on the card chips. Through several rounds of bluffing and betting, players watch and wait for their card chips to shift. They can lock any or all of their card chip values by placing them in the table's interference field, which blocks the pulses and stops the card chips from changing. To win at Sabak, a player must get a pure Sabak, which totals exactly 23, or an idiot's array, which consists of an idiot face card, value 0, a 2 value card, and a 3 value card, a literal 23. Some players cheat by using a skifter, a card chip rigged to change its value when the player presses the corner of the card. Sail Barge A sail barge is a huge repulsor lift vehicle that can be used over either water or sand. Jabba the Hutt had one such vehicle. The huge armor-hulled sail barge served as his personal transport for traveling across the desert wastes of Tatooine. His associates often used the vessel to stage raids, for it boasted an impressive amount of offensive weaponry. Its blaster deck guns were notably formidable. Though the sail barge was equipped with a powerful thrust engine, the crew normally used the barge's main sails to catch the desert winds and propel the ship over shifting sands. Jabba's sail barge was destroyed by Luke Skywalker and his companions during the rescue of Han Solo. Salacious Crumb The small Kowakian monkey lizard named Salacious Crumb was a member of Jabba the Hutt's court. In fact, Crumb held a favored position in the court, always sitting close to his bloated lord and master. When Jabba spilled food and drink, Crumb was there to catch it and consume it himself. Known for his taunting cackle and his habit of mimicking everything said around him, Salacious Crumb was an annoying and disgusting being. He died along with many of Jabba's associates during Han Solo's rescue and escape. Sand People, Tusken Raiders The Sand People of Tatooine, also called the Tusken Raiders, are a nomadic species with violent tendencies. To protect themselves from the harsh desert environment, Sand people wear heavy robes and strips of cloth, breath masks and eye protectors. The very aggressive sand people live in an uneasy peace with Tatooine's moisture farmers. They have been known to attack settlements from time to time, traveling in small tribes atop their banthas. These nomads are experts at desert survival. Their traditional weapon is the Gadurfi stick, 